Hey guys, I'm Aaron, and this is SketchUp for iPad Square One, where we take a look at the fundamentals of using SketchUp for iPad. Today, we're going to talk about the two and three point arcs. So I know, generally speaking, these videos are always about one command, and sometimes one command even ends up spilling over to two videos. But in this one, I wanted to just kind of lump together two point, three point arc because they're very similar in how they're drawn. In fact, it's just the last click or tap that differentiates whether you're creating a two or three point arc. And uh, granted, the difference between the two is, is fairly severe, what the geometry gets created, but we'll talk about that when we get into it. A lot of what we're talking about and, and showing is going to be similar, though, so I felt like it was, it was worth consolidating into one. With that, let's hop in. All right, so here we are, and I currently have the two point arc command active. Uh, this is not part of the default toolbar, so you won't find it here. You do have to hit the little dot, dot, dot at the bottom um, and choose two-point arc from here. When you do that, you will get a little submenu here. The submenu has quite a few modifiers here. The first two are increasing and decreasing the number of sides in the arc. So before I draw anything, I can tap these buttons to increase the number of sides. The very top in my, my uh, measurements box right now, it's increasing the number of sides, hitting the minus, decreases the number of sides. So if you prefer to do this, tap a couple times as opposed to clicking into the measurements box and typing in a specific number, you can do that right here. Below that, we have a unique modifier key. Uh, this is an inference lock that locks to a tangent. So lock tangent to the previous line. We'll talk about what that means in just a second. We'll draw a, a tangent line. Below that, we have the lock to red, green, and blue axes, as well as parallel and perpendicular. The very bottom is the help. So if you're pulling this command up, don't remember how it works. If you're, you're not in YouTube and you can't pull up this video, uh, you can click this and it'll give you a short video just showing you real quick how to draw arcs using the different input methods. So speaking of which, let's do some of that right now. So currently, if I hit the little gear up here, I can look and see I am in just draw mode. So to draw a two point arc in just draw mode, it's literally tap and drag a line. And then when I release the line, I'm going to tap and drag a second line that's going to let me set the bulge of that arc. So the first line that I draw is just the first two points. Second line I draw, that's the bulge. That, that's what actually sets that depth there. Let's see what happens if I switch over to click, move, click mode. So similar but different, I'm going to hard press to pick my first point, hard press to pick my second point and then move my cursor or my, my, my pencil and hard press to place that bulge. All right, let's get in here. Let's do this with just my finger. Again, very similar to click, move, click, hard press, move, hard press, and then hard press to set the bulge. Very similar. All right, final input method, bring my mouse over here. And with the mouse functions, I mean, all of these are fairly similar, right? So with a mouse, I'm going to click to pick my first point, click to pick my second point, and then drag and click to place my third point. Just to show real quick, I'm going to come over here and I'm going to, let's change to a three point arc. So a three point arc, if you look here, same exact uh, buttons are over here, but when I come in here to draw, watch it happen. So I'm going to Hard press to find my first point, hard press for second point, and this is the big difference. So before where I was dragging out the bulge between these two points, now I'm dragging a third point that it's going to use to create the arc touching between these three points. This is the difference between a two point arc, which is point one, point two, and then we create a curve there. Three point arc is an arc that intersects all three points. So like I said, very similar methods, click, 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 or tap, 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 but the arc that I actually create is going to be quite a bit different. Okay, so input's fairly simpler. You've seen the, the different ways to do it, the difference between two and three. Let's talk a little bit about some of these options over here. Um, I have some extra geometry I'm going to use to draw some things. Uh, let's start by looking at this tangent lock. So here's how tangent lock works. If I have geometry that exists and I come in here and choose that as my start point, look as I pull this off. See, it's, it's first off, it's already drawn the arc. So it's a little bit different because it's not waiting for me to draw that second line first. 
So now the only place I can go is tangent to this first line. Tangent just means it's coming off of the, the existing line and it's letting me draw an arc from there. This is if tangent lock is turned on. All right, let's just to show this, let's go ahead and lock in the red axis. As you might guess, guess what? I'm locked. I can only draw my, my initial arc in that red axis. Um, same things can work for red, green. Uh, the parallel and perpendicular will depend on the selected geometry before I start drawing. There's also some other things that Arc do that I wanted to point out uh, before I, you know, wrap this video up. And this is some of the stuff that automatically happens with Arc. It doesn't happen with other tools. So if I come in here with a two-point Arc and I click from this point to this point, when I'm creating this bulge and bringing this out like this, there's a spot right there. I don't know if you can see that, but it kind of stops right there. It, it, it snaps, and that is the half circle point. So if I create that, it's automatically creating a half circle arc. The other thing, so if I, if I do another uh, arc here, and I go from this point to this point, again, I don't have tangency lock turned on, but when I come up here, the first option is going to be to remain tangent to that first edge. And that's just something that happens, again, with arc, just has some different options in there for creating a two-point or three-point arc that are different from any other geometry I can create in SketchUp for iPad. So, again, I apologize for lumping them together, but uh, it just seemed redundant since so much of the way they work is the same. Uh, so I just wanted to kind of put them together and, you know, it's going to be, I don't want to, create videos just for creating videos. I want to create videos that are helpful for you. And I felt like putting those two together made a lot of sense. If I forgot something, missed something, or if at some point in the future, uh, you know, SketchUp for iPad has changed, please go ahead and leave a comment down below to let me know if there's a different way to do it than what I called out. Uh, if you like this video, go ahead and click like down below. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe. We create several videos each and every week and you'll be notified of all of them if you subscribe. Most importantly, like I just said, leave us a comment down below. What do you think of drawing arcs on the iPad versus SketchUp Pro? Uh, we like making these videos a lot. We like them even more when it's showing something you want to see. Thank you.